So starting here for this Tech Talk, we're going to be discussing this particular graphic that a customer, uh, Jim Weatherly, sent in. Um, if y'all are interested in like Civil War type stuff, he does do things for the North and the South and things like that. So if you're interested in some information about getting stuff that has to do with Civil War type uh, things, get in touch with me and I can get you his contact info. Okay, so the next stuff we have here, we want this to look like this on the graphic right here. So you can see that it has little lines around it and stuff like that. Doesn't seem very dark, all right? Nice photograph in the middle um, and some nice vibrant colors, all right? So just to repeat, when you print it to a black shirt, let me rotate this so it's not so confusing looking. All right. So when you're looking at this, when you print it out in the black shirt cues, you can actually see those lines as if they were supposed to be printed. This isn't the best photograph of the printout, so that's why it looks a little blurry in the middle here. Uh, but this is what we're trying to pay attention to. And then when we go to like a color shirt cue, you start getting an under base that looks like this. And this is the exact same graphic that we were printing. All right. So then from here, it puts the color on it, but it doesn't get rid of that big blotchiness behind it. So we've got to figure out what the hell is going on. All right. So now we've got to go back over to the original graphic. Let's go back over here. Um, if your GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar is in the corner of your screen and it covers up, uh, portion, portions of your screen over here. There's two arrows up at the little top that point together. If you, it minimizes your uh, go to meeting window. All right. So let's see here. Let me move some stuff around real quick. And at any time that y'all might have questions or anything, you can fill it out in the questions field, and uh, and then we can move on. All right. So if you need me to stop or repeat something, just fill it out in the questions field. Or if you have any other uh, concerns, just let me know. All right, so I'm going to move my little go to meeting thing out of the way here. All right. Let me just move this over so I can see my layers palette. So, what program I'm using right here is Photoshop. All right. This was created in Photoshop as well. The artist, I don't know who the artist was, it was somebody that created it for the, uh, for the end customer to print for their customers. All right, so this is what the graphics artist created here. He has different backgrounds, uh, different textures, all kinds of different stuff. So the part that we were worried about is the, the background there, why it printed that big old square. All right, so now we got to figure out where that square is. So as I can go through, the way they created this, they left it in layers, so that way you can uh, do individual uh, edits to the individual pieces. So let's start turning these layers off and see if we can get to that background layer to see what we're looking at. Okay. So you can see this is kind of the way they built this logo. So you don't really have to recreate it from scratch if you need to do some edits. So I'm going to show you a couple of little integrated tools that we have in the RIP software where you can go back and forth between the RIP software and, the, and your Photoshop to be able to get desired editing uh, like aspects. Okay, so now we're back down to the background here. All right, so the background looks neat, but why would it print that kind of hazy kind of thing around it? So I look down here at my layer. I'm going to click on this, and I notice that the graphic artist who made this basically reduced the master opacity of that layer so that way it was see-through. This works great for web graphics and stuff like that, especially if you're um, putting it with a black background. So let's turn this off real quick and see what it looks like. You can't really see anything there. All right, so let's turn this opacity back up and see what we're really looking at. So it was at 28. This is it at 100%. So now you see that there, it's actually black and white and some faded areas and stuff. So that's not really going to be desirable. All right, let's put it back on the uh, black background here. So now you can see it kind of comes out to the edge. It has pixelation all through this thing. Let's see if we can see kind of what happens if we add a stroke around it. This is an easy way to kind of find hidden stuff. I don't have to actually keep it, but you see how this little stroke line I have, um, what it does is kind of put a, a little line around all the different um, pixels in there. So you see that light pink that's around here? That's all pixels that are going to be printed. 
So, and it's right up to the edge of the graphic. So that means it's going to be a nice little square. So let's put back on this. Let me just hit OK here. I'm going to do it up at about 2. Let's see what we're looking at now. So that's where that big square box comes from. All right. That red, the stroke line, is putting it around every single 1% of a pixel. It will add a stroke to because that's, that's what a stroke does. It strokes what is the pixels that are already physically on the screen there. So now we've got to address these, all right, because that's what you get when you print the color cue out. You have to have the graphic on a transparency and not a black background. So that's why these pixels come into play, and that's why it prints like it does. So how can we address this so that way it prints the way we want it to on both color shirts and on black or and on black shirts. All right, so let's go back over here to my layers tablet. I'm going to go ahead and get that back down the master opacity of that, uh, back down to 28 percent. Just type it in here because that's where the original was. But you still see it has a little bit of redness around there. I don't know if you can see it on your screens, but I can definitely see it on mine. Okay, so let's see if we can dot this thing up a little bit first thing I'm going to do is kind of get rid of those square edges. So let's go back here to the stroke line and just double click on that. Bring this down a little bit so I can see it. I'm going to increase the stroke to about like a three or four so I can see it. And then click OK. OK, so now from here I'm going to increase my canvas size so that way I can see the squared off edges and then be able to correct it. All right, so from here, we'll just go image, canvas size. So it's 14 inches wide. Let's make it, say, 16 inches wide by 16 inches wide. All right, so now I can see that there is, like, a little bit of squared offness. So if I want to kind of fade that edge in, what I can do is come in with, like, my eraser tool. All right. Bring it over here. I can increase my brush size by using the bracket keys on my keyboard. All right. And then I can also right click and change the hardness of the brush. All right. The hardness, if you have it 100%, it will delete everything within that little circle of the brush. But if you have your hardness at, say, zero, it fades the edge sort of like this. So it erases hard in the middle and kind of fades as it goes out. So by doing this, I can sit there and kind of fade these edges in. I don't have to be real clean with it. I just need to get some of these pixels off so it doesn't look all squared. All right. So now that I've got that, I don't have a squared off edge on my prints or anything. Let's go ahead and get rid of the stroke line. So we'll just drag that down to our uh, trash box. All right. I do have a question. Uh, this C screen is darkened, making it hard to see. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Okay, so I got rid of the stroke line. So it's kind of hard to see with a black background, I do agree. Um, but there, you can't really see anything on there either. So once you get some designs like that, you've got to kind of pick them apart to see kind of what pieces you have to edit. Okay, so now we have this. All right, so let me turn back on these layers here. And I'm going to save this as my little edited design. But that's not going to help me with the color shirts yet. And I'll show you why. Okay, so now we've cleaned up the edges. It still has its multi layers. It still has a black background on it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is go File, Save As. All right, so we'll go... I'll just do this one. I'll call it generally edit one. All right, and I'll put this in my folder here. And I'll just save it as the uh, regular Photoshop file. Okay, so I hit save. Okay. So now let's go take a look and see how this would actually print in the RIP software. I'll go back on my RIP software. Now, the ways I'm going to be editing this, um, you, can, you definitely want to edit with the cue that you're using. So let's just see what it's going to print on. I still saved it with a black background. 
So that means this would be made for a um, for a dark shirt because it has the features in the RIP software in the black cues called the knock me blackout feature. So it uses the black of the garment to be the black of the, uh, the design. Okay, so let's import that image. There's edit one. And instead of printing this out, I'm going to show you a cool little feature that the RIP software has. All right. From here, I'll just drag that in a little bit. It centers itself. So I, instead of ripping and printing when I hit the print button up here in the RIP software, what I can do is go into and rip only. Or I could hit the button next to the print button, which is spool job. Same thing. So we'll just go rip only. So this processes your image, but it doesn't actually send the job to the printer. All right, so now in here, I want to see what, this, the, what the output uh, information will be. So the programmers of the C6 software put this really cool feature called raw view in the uh, software. So after it's been processed, I can go down here to view raw data. Once I click on that, it brings up this little thing. The raw data preview is extended to offer a representation of process output. The colors displayed may not accurately reflect what they will look like when they print. So basically what they're saying is it's just a simulated view, so don't pay attention to colors. You're paying attention to where the ink, where the actual dots of ink are going to be. So you, if you want to remember this selection next time so it doesn't pop up, just check that or hit OK. All right, so what it does is it scans, and that's why I said it doesn't give an accurate representation of color and stuff. <laughs> that's why it looks all hot pink. But you have your two layers here. You have your underbase layer, which is one, and your color layer. All right, so, but it's kind of hard to see what the actual white uh, is going to print. So what I like to do is change my substrate color to a dark gray. So that way I can see the white on there. So I click here and click OK. It rescans it. So this is what it's physically going to print. All right, you notice that it knocks out all the black, like around the outside edges and things like that. So that was the feature of that RIP software. And you can see that it has those lines uh, that are going to print. Okay, so now let's turn off my layer two, which is the color layer. So this would be my underbase as it prints. Okay, so I can see just those little bitty hidden lines sticking out just a little bit. So this is what it would actually print like on a colored shirt. All right. So, and then I can see what the black print's like. All right, cyan. So it's just adding all the process colors into it. All right, you notice that I'm not touching anything while it's scanning the little line that goes down here. Uh, it will cause it to get corrupted, like I can't choose anything else, all right, because it will crash that program and you will have to close it out. So if you ever want that line to stop, once it gets to where you want it to stop, you can hit the escape key and it stops the processing. Okay. All right, so that's what it would print like on our black shirt. All right, let's go back over here. Let me close this out. And I'm going to switch over to the color shirt cues. All right. Now, the reason I'm choosing uh, color best instead of graphics best is because it's more of a photograph. All right, even though it has a lot of saturated colors in it, uh, if I tried to print that photograph in the graphics best queue, it would oversaturate it and he would look all like blotchy looking and stuff like that. That's kind of like those pictures I showed you at the beginning of this. All right, so I'm going to use the photo modes, which are the ones without graphics in its name. All right, so now let's go back to Photoshop. We have to prep the graphic for doing a color shirt, so we have to remove this black background. All right, so I'll come over here to my layers tablet. Scroll down here to the bottom where that background was, or the color fill, and I'll just drag this to the trash can. Okay, so now it's on a transparency. So this would be, and that's kind of the rule, anytime you use the color shirt cues, your graphic has to be on a transparency because it prints pixel for pixel. All right, so now we'll go file, uh, save as. We'll do edit two. All right, so let's go, once this finishes saving, we'll go back over here to the rip. 
we'll import edit two. And we'll click open. All right, so now it looks like this, and it looks like it look, might do it properly, but let's really check it and see what the underbase is going to print like. So what we'll do is right click on it, rip only. And I hope I'm not working from the already edited file, that'd be funny. Okay, so let's go through and view raw data. Okay, it'll scan through. So I'm going to darken this underbase a little bit so that way I can see it a little bit better. I'm going to do that darker gray. And it looks like I'm using the edited file. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, so give me a second here. Let me turn off layer two. So you can barely see it on the screen here. Let me see if I can change the substrate color back to black here. if that'll show it. No, it's not really showing it. There is a little bit of pixelation around the edge here. Let me go in. Let's see. Substrate color. Let's change it to a dark red. Okay, I'll zoom into the edge so you can kind of see the murkiness here. Let's see. Let's go to the zoom tool. So you can see where it's just blotchy. You don't have those lines sticking out but like before. Okay. Now we can put the uh, color layer back on here. Let me turn the zoom off. Once you have the zoom button clicked in, you have to turn it off before you can go to anything else. So you see the lines, but it's also putting white inside those pixels. Let's go back to the gray color. That might help. So you can see, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see in this raw view, but let's, let's zoom in even further. So you've got pixelation all around the edges here, where, and it's not just the lines that we want to print. It's printing everything. All right, let's go back down to 3.13. Okay. Okay. So now let me show you the trick of how to be able to integrate two graphics into one another using the RIP software. All right, so say I liked it better the way that it did the underbase, because you can't even really see those lines in this preview versus the one that we did in the black one. Let me show you the difference just to make sure. here. So you can see more of those lines coming out, but when I switch that substrate to gray, this is kind of more of what I'm looking for. That type of feeling that it did not have in the uh, uh, color shirt cube. It's just how it looks at pixels. The reason it's seeing these pixels is darker, okay, is because we had it on a black background. We could see through those semi-opaque pixels to the black background, so it mixed those two colors together and made this color. So you have to take into account that when you put something on a black background, it also makes new colors, because especially if you can see through them like gradients. All right, but that's also what helps it blend into shirts as well. Okay. So I know that it prints good here, but it did not print good in my um, color shirt queue. So let's take this one. Let's open the page back up so it's back to its original, all right, without it being processed. That takes away the ripping. So then I can right-click on it, and I can go in, or actually, instead of right-clicking on it, I can go up here to my Jobs menu, and it has a couple tools in here. One of the tools I want to talk about today is under the CAD link one for Knock Me Black Out, okay? So when I bring that exact image that had a black background in there, I can go in and use my little slider as if it was the Knock Me Blackout slider. So this might answer some of your questions like, what does the Knock Me Blackout slider do? Okay, so let's let's click on Underbase here. So 
what's black is going to be white in my underbase. It just gives you contrast. Let me zoom in a little bit here. All right. So I can bring more underbase out by increasing the number. See how it makes it, the white much more solid? Okay. But that's also going to be way too much. I don't want it to be that solid. So default is like 70. So let's take it down to like 25. So this would be a very light underbase. 26, let's say shirt color. But you also start getting into a lower threshold where it's not looking like the graphic. So as I increase these, I want to try to get it as close to the top image that was the original. And you notice right around 70 is when it starts getting pretty close. Let's go up to like 80. I think we'll, we'll leave it at about 80. All right? So you'll lose a little bit of color, but we'll correct that in a second. So now we'll click OK. So what this is basically doing is deleting the background that we put it on in Photoshop. All right? Because now it makes it into a flat image once it comes into here. It's like a, a TIFF file. All right, so we'll hit OK. So now the original image has been edited to remove every piece of black that was in it. So let's go back over here to Photoshop and show you the original. It had the black background on it. Let me add one real quick. Drag this below to the bottom layer. So this was the original here. And it had all that funkiness behind it. All right, let's go back to the rib. So now I have this one. It's been edited now. So let's go back. I'll right click on it and go send to Photoshop. Go back to Photoshop. So now all the black has been removed from this image. Okay? So let's go back over here and get rid of the layers that we don't want. All right? So I don't want the black background and I don't want my um, background here my background texture, because that's what we were trying to get rid of. So then from this, I can go Control-A, right, and then go up to Edit, Copy Merged. The reason I want to copy merged is because I want all these layers to be copied with it. I don't want to have to do them one at a time. So now I'll go back to my job ticket, and then I'll paste this in here, Control-V to paste. All right, so now we have this. So basically, I just imported the real image that had all the corrections. It still had the black around the lettering. I just omitted the background. But my little tip that I created in um, my RIF software with the Knock Me Black out on basically left my lines up here. All right. Can you kind of see where I'm going with this? Now I've got to make sure it lines up. So let's see. Let's add a, a background in here so it gives us some color. Let's go with like a, a dark gray. I'll drag this to the very bottom layer. All right, so it looks like it might be centered, but let's zoom in here a little bit and see if we can see it. We'll move this over just a little bit. So now with this top layer, so I can see the bottom layer, so I match it up properly, I'll change the opacity so I can see through it. See how it's off a little bit? All right. So then with that opacity there, I'm going to use my Move tool to move this color layer to match up with the bottom layer. Use my arrow keys to fine tune it. Think that might be it. All right. So now I've got a perfect match right on top of itself. Okay, let's zoom back out. So now my little lines that are back there are actually going to print with a little bit of darkness in it. All right, so let's bring this here. I got to turn my opacity back up. And now we have a nice finished image. All right, so let's see what it would look like on a blue background, say a blue shirt. So I'd have my little lines coming off the end of it the way they wanted it to look in the first place. 
I can do it on a red shirt. Same thing. So basically, I controlled or edited my background because it was in separated layers. So I can use these little tools to get a desired effect. So now I'm going to save this. Let me get rid of the fill so that way we can put it on our color shirt queue. We were going to go File, Save As. I'm just going to go with the TIFF. It's fine. I can go TIFF, uh, PNG, or PSDs. Uh, but I want to get rid of the layers. So it flattens it, but still holds the transparency information. So let me go back to my folder where I had it saved at. And we're going to call this one... Oops. We'll go Jin Lee edit three. And save. So we definitely want to save the transparency, but I want to discard all the layers and save it as a copy. I don't do any image compression. I always just leave this as its default. All right, so I click OK. Now let's go back to the rip. We'll go back over here to my color shirts. We'll get rid of this one. And we will go to edit three, the TIFF file. Import that. Oh, I think I forgot something too. All right, so let me go ahead and get rid of this before I get it in here. All right, the thing that I forgot to do is when you export from the RIP out to Photoshop, it should help with the transfer speed so it doesn't take for freaking ever. Um, it saves the image as a 72 DPI, but you also notice that it's like 65 inches across. So let's go up here to image size. So even though it's 72 DPI, the RIP automatically shrinks it back down. So we don't need something that's 66 inches wide because it's never going to print that big. We're not printing a billboard. All right, so we'll just take this back down to say, well, let's check it and see what it, how many megabytes it comes up to. So right now it's 65.9. Let's take it up to 300 DPI, which is our kind of sweet spot. So from there, it takes it up to 1.12 gigabytes. That would take forever to process. So that's why we reduce our size down. Since our sizes of the platens are about like, a, like 11 and a half by 16 and a half, I'm just going to go my width of like 11. All right, it's a square image anyway. All right, so we'll hit OK. And then look at the megabyte size. It went down from a gig to 31.2 megabytes, so it'll process a lot faster. So we'll click OK. So, and that also, the 300 DPI gives it some nice detail where you don't get the pixelation and the blurriness. All right, so we'll hit save again. Oops, cancel. I need to discard layers. The reason I discard layers, it doesn't like hidden layers or anything like that. It'd probably print fine because I had both the layers uh, visible, but if I had a hidden layer, if I tried to print that into the color shirt queue, it sees that hidden layer and will print a big box of white. All right. So now we'll go back over here to the rip. Import that image. It's already at the size that it needs to print. Oh, maybe a little bit bigger. Let's go down to 11. All right, so now it even looks better than it did before. So let's rip it only. So all those semi-transparent pixels that were very hard to see by the naked eye on the, on the actual computer screen the RIP software sees it and prints the underbase for it. So that's why it printed that funky uh, underbase under those images. Just to go back to it again, show you what it did, was this one right here. So you have that nice murky background behind it. So this is what we're going to get now. Okay, so let's look at the raw data. All right. 
It's already been ripped. Okay. Let's change the substrate to the dark, a darker gray. So you can see the color pixels and everything that are going to be printed. And I'll turn off my color layer so that way I can see the white underbase. So it doesn't look like I have all kinds of weird pixels out in here, and it didn't even look like it was going to print that much of an underbase under those because they are kind of see through. So then it'll come back and hit it with color, and boom. All right, so let's see what this is going to print like. I'll go prep a shirt and we'll test it out. Close this. Um, let me back out of this a little bit. I want to move that up. It wouldn't. It's too high or too low down on the shirt. So let's go open page. Go back here. Let's do it two and a half down from the top. Normally I would trim my images uh, so that way the edge of my document is at the edge of the graphic. Let me show you how to do that. I don't think it's going to be necessary for this. So I just go image, trim. Whenever I'm finished with everything, I want to trim away all the transparent pixels. So that way when I want the top of his head two and a half inches down, it's two and a half inches down or three inches down or whatever, you, whatever size shirt you're doing. Okay, so from here, we're going to make this even go up to like two because I have to calculate that negative space there. So this, by trimming your images, it controls where the placement is a little bit more accurately. If not, just guesstimate it. Kind of look across and be like, yeah, it's going to be about two and a half down. Okay. So let's go ahead and rip it, and then I'm going to walk out here and pre-treat a shirt real quick, and we'll watch this sucker print. All right. Matter of fact, while that's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the camera. If y'all lose your screen, um, you can always click down there on that little blue snowflake that'll be in your taskbar, and uh, that usually will bring that screen back up. All right. Let me move this little graphic out of the way here. Just doing some testing. And I'm going to go grab a shirt and pre-treat it real quick, and I'll be right back. Spider Mini. Spread it on the heat press. Let it hover for about 30 seconds. Let that surface moisture of the pretreatment absorb into the garment. Yeah, I definitely don't want any kind of shiny. Uh, uh, really wet surface on the uh, garment uh, before I actually press it. It doesn't have to be completely dry, it just has to be diffused into the shirt. So it won't have any kind of shiny appearance. If it did have a shiny appearance to it, you will get a, like an, uh, it looks like a glazed donut look on the shirt when you pre-press it, which most customers do not like. So then after it's diffused into it, after that 30 to 45 second hover, uh, I press it for about 10-15 seconds, pop it up, Make sure that the paper doesn't stick to the shirt or have any kind of peel action. If it does, place it back down for about 5-10 more seconds, and then it's done. Okay, we're going to hoop up our shirt real quick. See how this sucker prints. It's 
So unfortunately, I do not have a colored shirt here that I can prove the fact, but you'll see it in the underbase the way it prints. Me personally, I like to scan the shirt manually just in case it catches something. And then once it gets in the cover, then I load it. All right. Oh, okay, so we had a question of how many degrees did I press this for? Um, for the inks that come in the machine, the P30i inks that ship with the uh, with the um, M2 here, oh, it's a reflection, so you can see it's just a P30i sticker on there. Um, but what it is is everything is 340 degrees. It's two minutes when you have um, uh, white ink on the shirt for cure time and one minute when you don't have uh, white ink on the shirt uh, for cure time. For pre-pressing, I do the same temperature, same pressures as everything. It's a medium pressure on it. All right, so the hover is like 30 seconds. That's basically the heat press, the heating surface hovered above the shirt for about 30 to 45 seconds just to let the pre-treat diffuse. And then press it with a piece of release paper for about 15 seconds, pop it up, paper peels, put it back down, hit it for five seconds. If you, if, since it's only like 15 and another five seconds, hit it 15 seconds, Pull your paper up, put it back down, hit it for another five seconds. The paper should just slide off the shirt like it's not even touching it. Then hoop it, make sure not to wipe your hand across the top of it, and then print it. Okay, I'm going to jump back over here to my rip real quick. And this particular print now costs $1.60. So we'll go ahead and hit print here. Let's see. Yes, i got to do the port configuration on this. It looks like it got to the wrong port. Always choose it from the drop-down menu. Oops. And if you're using a Spider Mini and pre-treating a black shirt, what setting do you use? It's all depending on the shirt, uh, this of uh, the setting. The kind of gray area of print or of pre-treatment is you have to have enough on there, a, a minimum, uh, that will cause the white ink to solidify and kind of congeal and harden, but you also don't want to put too much where it doesn't bond with a shirt and it peels away. And it also causes the white ink to puddle. So the particular shirt that I'm using is an Anvil 980, okay, it's just a basic uh, Anvil tee that you can get from like Sanmar, Alpha Broder, any of the other major manufacturers. All right, so from there you can... Um, and then we went through and did some testing. I can go all the way up to about a 7 or 8 and still get a decent looking print off of it. I can also go down to a 3 and get a decent print off of it. So there's that gray area in between. So for mine, for this particular shirt, I was between a 5 and a 6 on it. All right? And even then, that might be a little bit heavy. Let me roll the camera over here real quick. And I'll show you what this underbase looks like. All right. Go for a ride. So as you can see, this underbase is really putting some white out. But as it's coming out of the machine, the white is not puddled. It's not wet looking. Now it's wet in the line where it's actually printing. You can actually see the reflection a little bit. Let me move in there. But as it gets past like the print head, like past this area right here, the white ink has already started to um, solidify and not have that puddly wet look to it. It's hard to get a good view on this because of the reflection of the light but it's nice and solid. Okay. Yes, so another question that somebody posted up was, so if you're getting some pooling, um, you might have too much pretreatment. Correct, but there's also a threshold. If you're printing at your quality levels and you have your uh, white ink maxed at 100%, um, then, yes, it's going to puddle a little bit. I mean, it's putting out a lot of ink on there. But it should, like, once it gets past, like, here's your print area. That's where your head is right here, okay? 
the um, once it gets past like to the front, that white ink should be kind of solid looking. All right, let's see what the color looks like as it's going on there. So yeah, that's looking pretty slick. So, and I just made that graphic to be able to be printed regardless on a black shirt, color shirt, or a white shirt. With that image that's on the transparency now, I have completely removed that black background and made it print like it's supposed to. And it's just playing around with those tools and knowing what they do. There is a video on our uh, website of the plugins for the RIP software under the C6 section. I'll get to that in a sec uh, second. Okay, so a question about the what was the cost of the shirt uh, and also what it, uh, with the ink on it as well. Um, inside our RIP software, let me switch back over here to my screen. Okay, it gives me the ink cost at the end here. If yours is all the way down here at the end where you have slider bars, you can get rid of all that information just by right-clicking on these little bars and uncheck all of these. I don't really need this information. It's just there. Uh, I don't, I've never found a kind of real world use for it. So I just uncheck it. So the only thing I have checked is job cost, so it's right up here on the front dash. All right, so this was $1.60. The actual anvil shirts, depending on what uh, column quantity pricing that you all get, you will have, um, they can be anywhere from like $2 up to $3 for the shirt. I mean, that's a ballpark figure as well. Benefit of working here is, or is they order them for me. I just have to print them. <laughs> All right. So let me switch back over here to the camera, and I will show you the print. Just finished up. All right. So, then we have this nice little graphic shirt. Let's look at it. Right here. So this, the camera itself is putting the colors really saturated. So it's definitely not as red in person, just so you know. Even I'm not that tan. I'm a ginger, so <laughs> just so you know. Um, but, yeah, as you can see, you've got the little lines going out here. It looks like they wanted it in the original graphic with the black background. So these are just little editing tools that you can do. All right. Okay, so the next question we have here is it says, I noticed you didn't use an underlay when hooping. Uh, we store ours upside down with weights, but it still does not seem to lay flat, which causes issues. Stop. Um, what do you mean the underlays? Like the plastic toppers for the Viper 2? Is that the machine that you're working with, uh, Sandy? Okay, so on the Viper 2, those black toppers, this is an M2, it doesn't have them, okay? The, the, the 421 platen, you can actually hoop across a 421 platen without using those black toppers. Um, as a tech to, uh, to you guys, basically to explain this, is it's a piece of plastic. So setting them on the ground, leaning up against something, it creates a bow in them, or setting them near your heat press, the heat, they're just too, it's a piece of plastic. So me personally, I just don't use those black toppers, okay? Because what will happen is it will hump up in the middle and cause the image to be blurry around the edges and can even cause head strikes. So 
let's let me go in and I'll I'll grab a 421 flatten for y'all guys and just uh, for the Viper 2 users just to show you that you don't have to use those black toppers. All right, let me just set this out of the way. Okay, hold on one second. And of course, there's not one in the showroom, so let me walk back here to the service department. Are you up to platinum? Okay, now we're back. Okay. So this will give you an example with the Viper 2 plan. I'm just going to set it up here just so y'all can see it. But you do not have to do the plastic toppers. So when you're hooping these, you're just going across like this. With the tuck lock system, which is great, the shirt will not loop down in the bottom. So I tuck in my tops here. And you notice I keep my hands across from each other, just keeping the shirt taut. Tucking in just enough, so I'm trying not to waste time and tuck every single piece in. But there we go. And if you look down here at the shirt service, there's no little dip down or anything like that in that middle area. Same thing if I went across all of them. If I have it tucked properly, then it's not going to sag down. Okay. I hope that answered the questions. Alright. Well, I definitely hope this was a, a useful and uh, informative tech talk today. Um, we are going to draw it to a close. Um, if you have any final questions, go ahead and fill those out now, and we can go from there. Okay. What causes overspray of white ink? I printed four shirts. Two printed perfectly, and two had overspray. Uh, what would what would that be caused by? It can be caused by the platen being too far away from the garment. Um, it could be a couple different things. Um, if you prefer, or what would probably be the best, Sandy, is if you took pictures of your good ones and the bad ones and created a support ticket, and um, that way we can look what your prints look like and to see what the best diagnosis and the best uh, remedy is for it. Okay. And after it's done printing, Pete, uh, just so you know, I take it over to my heat press. I put a piece of parchment paper uh, to protect the image, close it for two minutes of cure time at 340 degrees, and done. Once it comes off the heat press, it is completely done. Two minutes of cure time at uh, 340 degrees for the P30I inks. If you're using the genuine, if you're a Viper 2 user, okay, um, and you're using the genuine DTG inks, it's a um, different brand of ink. There's not one better than the other, okay? It's just two different machines, two different inks. One goes in a cartridge, one is bulk. All right. The um, uh, the cure times for the genuine inks, it's still two minutes, but the temperature is raised up to 358. But that's only if you're using the genuine DTG inks versus the genuine P30i DTG inks. Okay. So, the Viper 2 is a different machine. You have the M2, which is back here behind me. Let me switch off of the camera here. Let me show you our websites that we go to. Go back over here to my screen. Okay, I'll minimize my rip. So let's go to just go to internet here. So to get to our support site, it's not just the coldesi.com, but we have support.coldesi.com. It just got redone and we're still adding information into it. 
but this is the new look. It's pretty easy to navigate around and everything. All right, so once it comes up, you have your different types of equipment we do, the Pro Spangle, the cams, the embroidery avance machines, and also the garment printers. So if I click on the garment printers, we go to the next landing page, and then you can pick the different printers you have. This is one of our older models that is discontinued, uh, the DTG Viper, but we definitely still support it. It's been a reliable machine, the Viper 2, and the M2, and then this is your RIP Pro software. So the Viper 2 looks like this. It prints two shirts in line, so it does one and then it goes to the next one, whereas the M2 can print two simultaneously side by side or one extra large one in one run, whereas this one does an extra large one front to back. All right, so also going into the RIP Pro section here, I wanted to show you all some of the videos that we have for the C6 software. Okay, so under here you have the actual download for the software. Um, you have to have the security key for it to work. You have your user's guide, very important to read that. It goes into a lot of information of how the RIP really works. It teaches you about um, color and all kinds of useful information. Um, if you need a step-by-step -step installation video, it's in here as well. Um, I also have supplemental videos if you just call into the support line. Um, package setup, so this is all like installing the software and stuff like that. General features, also your plugins, those were the knock me blackout, um, the editing and fluid mask, and the actual uh, programmer uh, describes what all those different functions are. Um, we actually have printing from Photoshop, from Illustrator, and from Corel, uh, so that way you can basically automate directly out of those programs choose the queue that it goes in, then it automatically puts that job in the queue. Okay, and then the helpful things like holding errors, this is like if you unplug the printer or something like that and you get a holding error, this would be how to correct it. All right, C5 is the older version of the software, and then you have the much older ones, the VO4 and the VO3 as well, but those won't have anything to do with the new users. Okay. So, we're basically right on time. It's about one o'clock over here in Tampa on a nice hot winter day. <laughs> but I uh, hope you all have enjoyed this. Um, there's sh this recording should be up on the um, the webinar or the uh, the Tech Talk pages uh, pretty soon, or it will be. Uh, so keep checking back. Or if you need a copy sooner, uh, you're welcome to create a support ticket and say that you want a copy of this uh, Tech Talk that we did today. It'll be dated. Um, 1-18-2017. All right. Well, y'all have a wonderful day. I'll definitely be hearing from y'all on the support lines. Uh, definitely don't forget that if you do have a support ticket that needs to be done, if it is a print quality issue or something to that order, always include images or pictures of what the output is so that way it speeds up the troubleshooting process so that way the techs can give you advice of what with what you're actually seeing. All right. So y'all have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.